Listen to the Vibes, hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. I am so honored to have Mr. Mike Zapsick here. How are you, sir? All the way from New Jersey. I am doing very well, Kyle. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, man. I've been waiting for this for quite a while, actually. Um, Big fan of comic book men. Um, Thank you. Always on my DVR. And when they stopped the show, I was very, very disappointed. Just, uh, yeah, I, I, I get that. I was also very disappointed. Damn it. I got bills <laughs> to pay. What's going on here? <laughs> so this is what happened. We took a trip to New York last year and went to go see uh, everybody from the Justice League. They were at a Comic-Con. And I told my wife, I said, look, we're already this close to New Jersey. I'm, I don't care how we get there. I'm taking the trip. We're going to the secret stash because I've I've got to see the store and lo and behold, there's Mike there at the store. Oh yeah, Walt and I work here. You know, five sometimes six days a week. We're here. Um, you know, we, we like I said, we got bills to pay. So <laughs> <laughs> just because the the show stopped doesn't didn't mean that the uh, stash closed down. Kevin's committed. Kevin is. Uh, and I'll say this right out, uh, after Stan's passing, Kevin is the, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, but he's the heir apparent to Stan as ambassador of comics, because Kevin loves comics. Kevin and Jay, Jay Muse, um, Jay has never read a comic that wasn't the best comic ever. <laughs> Which is so true, because here's a guy who's grateful or was grateful to just get comic books. So, um, you know, even if it's a crappy book, he loved it. So uh, Kevin is, Kevin's that guy who is out there, um, you know, meeting his fans. And he, he literally adores comics almost as much as Stan did. I, I put that to him one time. I said, you know, with Stan's passing, you are, you know, now the, the head ambassador. He's like, look, I, you know, I just swam in the same uh, water that Stan did. I I can't do, you know, any ju- any more justice than he did. I, as a matter of fact, I, you know, but Kevin's very self-deprecating. So, in my opinion, he is like the guy on Stan Soapbox now. Well, what they need to do is have him do the cameos now in all the movies. That'd be awesome. In in all the Marvel movies, that'd be great. You know, just passing that baton, um, especially with the what is it, Phase Four coming out. Oh yeah, I'm I'm anxious. You know, I'm I'm waiting to see what direction they go in. You know, Eternals, all that stuff coming out. I'm I'm excited. Yeah, my theory is it's going to be the Young Avengers, and we're going to see, you know, the the younger, the like the 18 to 24 year old superheroes coming up. You know, because we have Kate Bishop coming out. Um, in WandaVision, they're showing. You know, she's got two kids with the Vision. So, you know, that's uh, Billy and Tommy from the Young Avengers, Wiccan and uh, Speed. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, that, that should be interesting. I mean, um, and who do you think's going to lead it? Because some people are theorizing maybe Black Knight's going to step in and lead, lead the Avengers. Uh, that would be weird, but I think it's going to be Falcon as Cap. I think he would be fan- a fantastic choice for the role. Anthony Mackie is a great actor. Oh, yeah. and. He's got gravitas and he should they should give it to him i mean cap already gave him the shield so passing on the mantle why not okay. uh, you know but before we get any further in any comic books or anything let's have everybody hear about you like where you were born and raised and all that good stuff oh that boring crap uh i was actually uh the secret stash jay and silent bob secret stash is here in red bank I was born in the same hospital that Kevin was born in, uh, Riverview, which is two blocks from the stash. And I grew up uh, a town over in a small town called Lincroft. Okay. So is that how y'all got to be friends? You were born in the same hospital? Nope. No, no. Actually, yeah, yeah, we were 
they 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 you know did the whole blood brother thing and they're like all right and they cut our palms as infants and you know we had to share no uh kevin and i didn't meet till later on the first time i ever met kevin we i have to go back because we went to the same comic book shop which would eventually become jay and silent bob's secret stash it was a place called comiXology and um for any fans of kevin if you know the name uh steve dave of course you would um, there was a gentleman who was literally, I swear to God, he was the comic book guy come to life from the Simpsons. Uh, his name was Steve and they didn't know his name was Steve or Dave. So they called him Steve Dave and he ran the place. And I was, a I, I got my comics pulled there. Walt did. And so did Kevin and I never met them there, but, um, when Kevin was making clerks, this guy would say, oh, you have to, and he sounded just like comic book guy too. He's like, oh, you have to watch this movie that one of your fellow reservists have made. Uh, it's called Clerks. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. And um, yeah, time goes by and I fall out of favor with Steve Dave because I didn't pick my books up on time. And I'm like, screw him. He called up to my house threatening my girlfriend is like, tell him to get his, his ass down here and pick up his books post haste. And she's like, who is that guy? And I'm like, I, have, I know him, but I don't know him. So I was like, screw you, keep the books. And um, I didn't go back there until I heard that Kevin had purchased the place. And by then I had seen mall rats before I saw clerks. And I was like, wow, this is, this guy speaks to me. And um. I started coming in and I, I was a, res, a reservist at Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash when they first opened. And first time I ever met Kevin was uh, a couple of months after I started coming back. I was working at a, um, I was working in the superfood town in Red Bank and Kevin came in, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. I was there for the early shift and I was walking up uh, one of the aisles to grab something from up front and uh, Kevin was there picking out toilet paper. And I, I walked past him, I'm like, wait a minute, that was Kevin Smith. And I, I went back and you know, I had that interior debate, should I go and say, you know, I'm a fan or not? And meanwhile, he's like squeezing the Charmin. And I, I went up to him, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of your movies, thanks so much for what you do. And I just turned around and walked away. And he's sitting there like holding toilet paper going, oh, that was, I guess that was pretty cool. And uh, I don't think he remembers that. <laughs> uh, but I did tell him that, you know, we had a, a connection back in the day after I started working for him. And he's like, I have no clue what you're talking about. He's like, I bought a lot of toilet paper back in the day. I'm like, good for you, man. Hope you went, once you got that clerk's money, I hope you got two ply. Uh, right, so that's where all the toilet paper in the United States went, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> No, we, we give out toilet paper and hand sanitizer with every comic book purchase. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's how uh, I met him. And then, you know, I started working here and, you know, little by little, you know, uh, I, this was a part-time job that became a full-time job. So it was great. And that's the dream job for me. I would love to do that. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a lot of fun working with Walt Flanagan every day. Great. So in the uh, movie Mall Rats, do, whenever Walt is at the store, does he say, "Tell him Steve Dave" or "Tell him Steve and Dave"? No, just it, he doesn't say that ever, except on the podcast. That's it. Really? Because I could have sworn he said that in the in the movie when they went to in see the movie, Stan. But not, no, it was "Tell him Steve Dave." It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Steve, not Steve and Dave. No, Steve, Steve Dave. Steve Dave. Yeah, that was that was their nickname for uh, for Steve. Good old Steve. <laughs> I could tell stories about him, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I want to hear more about you. You know what? What? What do you like to do other than the comics? Uh, oh my God, uh, Ming and I own uh, Ming Chen, who was also on Comic Book Man with with us. When we realized that there was going to come a time when, you know, the show was going to, you know, have a sundown, and you know, we'd have to do something after you know, post comic book men, we decided to open up a podcast studio and just, you know, have people come in, uh, do their podcasts and 
you know, we would get it out there for people to listen to. Cause you know, everyone's got a story. Everyone has something they want to say. So, you know, why not help these people do it? True. Y'all have almost like a, a school type thing going on, don't you? Yeah, it's it's a podcast studio. We we do classes for people who are like beginners, you know, podcasting 101. And uh, essentially, it's just sitting down and getting comfortable in front of a microphone. And that's, I think, I mean, I, I just, you know, gave away $300 worth of a, you know, a lesson right there. But it's just, it's just getting in front and being yourself and not not holding back. Most yeah. people tend to do that. When you're podcasting, you tend to, to hold back because you're like, oh, I'm, in your mind, you're like, I've got all these people who are watching me and God, I look like such a tool. Then look like a tool or look like a nerd or look like a geek. Just get your passion out there and, and you know, bring that to the, the forefront because people can't help but respond to passion. Even if it's misdirected, it's like Star Wars is better than Star Trek and people are like, the guy's a nerd, but he seems to know what he's talking about. So I'll, I'll give him a shot. I, you know, I, I love watching those kind of shows. I love the passion in it. And you can tell when somebody really loves something or it's just like, oh, um, today we're going to talk about, uh, you know. Exactly. When, when you have to think about what you're going to say next, that's when you, you end up tripping over your own two feet. I got into it because of uh, the paranormal field and uh, you know that I, I, I had a uh, well I still do a, a paranormal team and um, I thought man that'd be great to do a podcast and so I, I bought the book on uh -huh. how to podcast and by the way if you buy a book on podcasting throw it in the trash gotcha yeah it's it's crap um, so I'm doing everything the book tells me to do. Oh, make sure you write down all these questions and blah, 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 blah. And I would do that and I would not really pay attention to who I was talking to because I'm waiting to ask the next question. It sounded too scripted. It's, it's canned. It sounds like you did it and you might as well have a laugh track behind you. So that's, for me, it, it's just, you know, two guys talking. If someone else is listening, so much the better. But I mean, it's just you and me, Kyle. It's us talking about stuff. I love the fact that you're into the paranormal. I'm looking behind you and I'm, wow, that's, that's pretty um, badass. <laughs> um, I, I love listening to podcasts about the paranormal. I love listening to podcasts about crappy movies. You know, um, I, I can, you know, talk about the paranormal like this much, this much. Uh, I've had a couple of things where I'm like, wow, I think I saw a ghost, but a good, good, good ghost. But no, <laughs> you're like living, living that kind of dream. And for me, I, I was, I have friends who are in the, um, on the circuit. Uh, I'm going to give a couple of shout outs, Brian Kano. And uh, yes, Brian's supposed to be on my show. Actually. Brian's awesome. Brian and I met through the con circuit and because of comic book men. And that's one of the things that I love most about comic book men was that it gave me uh, access to stuff that I love. You know, where else am I going to meet Stan Lee? Oh, exactly. Except to pay like 600 bucks to have him uh, fist bump me and then just like, you know, move on, move on, keep the line moving. Mm -hmm. but Stan, is, Stan was, and God rest his soul, he was one of the sweetest men you'll ever, ever meet. He loved his fans. And I think there's a, there's a corollary between him and Kevin in that respect that, you know, Kevin loves his fans as much as Stan did as much as Stan loved his. So, and, and that was a lot. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to be able to take my, my grandson to go meet Stan Lee several years ago. Um, he's, my grandson's 10 now, but he was four when he got to meet him. And mm. he still kind of remembers it, but I, I do have the picture to prove it. Damn straight. Yeah. And, <laughs> hey, look, you, you met Stan Lee and he's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a memory that, you know, he can look back on and be like, I don't really remember it, but I have a picture. Right. Right. At least he has that story to tell, you know, sure. but that's how he's going to, you know, get the chicks when he gets older. I got to. Absolutely. Stan yeah. Lee. Yeah. Damn, Stan Lee, Stan, Stan fist bump me. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a ticket. <laughs> well, and I took my daughter to get to meet Adam West just a couple months before he passed away. So that was another, you know, 
of course, a passionate moment you have with your children where you, you know, you got to meet these people. Right. And, you know, I, I mean, you, you and I both, we you know, grew up in the seventies and we got to watch all the reruns of Batman and all that was, that was our day, man. And, and that was so formative for me. Cause I mean, he, aside from, I mean, Batman's a great character, but that iteration of Batman, he was so, um, I mean, he had a stick up his ass, of course, but he was so forthright that you're like, you can't help but admire a guy who, you know, safety first, Robin. <laughs> you know, it was, you're sitting there going, wow, that's, that ain't right, but that is right. So yeah, that's, damn, that's cool. That's where you learn your morality. So, you know, we, we, we learn as children by watching other people mm -hmm. and by watching our parents and you know, by watching stuff on TV. That's why, you know, the Brady Bunch was so, uh, you know, essential to me. Oh, you yeah. Know, work out your problems in 22 minutes, for God's sakes. And uh, I got this streaming service that uh, I can watch just about any, any channel you can imagine. And, you know, it's, it's only like 30 bucks a month, but you can't DVR anything. You can't pause. You can't rewind right. that kind of thing. But they have a... Uh, a station on there it's 24 hours of all these different like actors or tv shows 24 hours of six million dollar man and batman there you go so, that is awesome. and it, there's something about tv for especially for our well i mean i gotta i gotta talk with my hands so for our generation mm -hmm. where i have all the discs of the six million dollar man but when am i going to sit down and pop them in it's much cooler to just like turn on your TV and it's there for you. You can't control it, but it's like, oh, this is great. Because we watch, um, as a matter of fact, it's funny. We watch The Bionic Woman and Six Million Dollar Man here at the stash every day. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And your, yesterday was, you got to see all the 70s football players like Larry Zonka. And uh, who the hell else was there? Uh, Dick Butkus. You know, and these horrible actors with Lee Majors making him look like uh, John Gielgud. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Hey, you remember Rosie Greer was even on Six Million Dollar Man. Of course he was. And he was also on, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, he was on The Brady Bunch. Yeah, you know what? He was. Joe Namath, Rosie Greer. That's right. Man, I love those memories. Of course, yeah. That's stuff that, like, it's a throwback to, to stuff that, kids these days aren't going to get like like saturday morning cartoons it was an event yes. saturday mornings was you had to be up at seven o'clock to watch your to watch the super friends you know and yeah. people forget that there was you know when the super friends came out they only had that one season for four years we watched it constantly it's like i remember that but you know we we got into the the pattern of reruns in our head that if you missed it, you had to wait like six months or a year to watch it again. So, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog, or the Wonder Twins? Oh, Wendy and Marvin and Wonder Dog. The, the Wonder Twins, there were pains in the asses. <laughs> Form of a bucket of water. I mean, yes, come on. Right. No, he, he couldn't even change into the bucket. The monkey had to carry the bucket around. And where the hell are you going to carry a bucket? Were you going to carry that on, like, hook it to your belt? It's, it's just stupid and noisy. Although they did, are kind of bringing them back from what I understand. I mean, what was it? The, uh, the, uh, the crossover that they just did crisis on infinite earths. And you see, uh, Gleek, the, well, you don't actually see him, but you hear him and you see the cage, the space monkey. Nice. I hope they were testing him for like communicable diseases or something. That would have been great. The, Okay, not a lot of people remember this, but this is one of my favorite cartoons. Do you remember The Adventures of Waldo Kitty? No. Okay, every week, Waldo Kitty would be a different character. Instead of Batman, he was Catman, and then he'd be like Tarzan or the Lone Ranger. Nobody remembers that cartoon. Oh, essentially, he was like the Captain Action of... The feline world. Cartoon, cart cartoon cats. All right, well, yeah, Garfield sucks, and let's go with Waldo Kitty. YouTube it. You can find it on YouTube. I, and I will. I'll check it out. 
it's it's like if you want to talk about like old Saturday morning stuff, Lancelot, the adventures of Lancelot, Lancelot Link. Mm -hmm. Remember Lancelot Link? I do remember that. Loved I used to call that show the monkeys and it would confuse the hell out of my brothers and like our babysitter. Like I want to watch the monkeys and she'd put on the monkeys. I'm like, not them. They suck. <laughs> She's going to break out in a song and I don't want to hear that. I hated that about Scooby-Doo and uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Cause and right now I, I realize the genius of those guys because they would have a song, you know, specific to that particular episode. And a lot of people took a lot of time to write that song and do the music for it. And I was like dismissive as a kid, like, ah, music makes my ears bleed. <laughs> so I guess you didn't like the Archies either then, huh? No, well, uh, I would watch up until the the song came on then i change over to lancelot link and uh what was the uh the what was it private eye chimp or something like that do you remember that one i remember inch high private eye i do remember that one too i used to watch that just about anything hanna barbera i was gonna watch of course everybody watched hanna barbera i mean it was the same formula um mm -hmm. I, I mean like the funky phantom um mm -hmm. Uh, speed buggy. I love speed buggy. Uh, Jabber Scoop jaws. Jabber jaws. Yes. Um, you had all these, these, it was the same formula. It was a group of kids, Josie and the pussycats, Josie cat, Josie and the pussycats in outer space. Mm -hmm. And then filmation tried to muscle their way in, you know, with, with the Brady kids and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that. Oh my God! <laughs> in space, stuff that made absolutely no sense. Why would you just send him into space? That was there's the formula. Send him into space, and, and we'll see what happens. That that's all you got to do. You put a space suit on him and put him in a spaceship. Yeah, d don't worry about the the logistics of oxygen or you know nutrients or anything or even peeing because they don't worry, they don't worry about that on Earth. We won't worry about it in space. And the Sid and Marty Croft shows. Oh my God. Um, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Lidsville. Lidsville. Nobody remembers Lidsville. HR uh, Puffin uh, stuff. stuff. Oh my God. Witchy Poo. Yes. Oh what, what is it? Uh, can't do a little because you can't do enough or whatever the hell that is. Because you can't do a lot or something like that. Do you know? Okay, here's a bit of trivia for you. You might know this. Do you know what HR and HR Puffin stuff means? Uh, no, I don't. That's Royal Highness backwards. Beautiful. How, how can you hate that? I know, you know, the things that, that I pick up on. <laughs> did you ever watch, they did the, um, the altered states of drugs at Chusets on uh, Mr. Show with Bob and David. No. It was a kickoff on um, HR Puff and stuff. No and kidding. Marty Croft stuff. YouTube it. It is well worth your time. Uh, the altered states of drug at Chusets. <laughs> and they, they did everything like there was, um, oh, what was it? The, um, like the pot brownies and they had all these brownies that were dressed up in like brownie uh like the girl scout brownie outfits and uh uh oh my god they had uh it was tom kenny was in it and it was great so you gotta see it it's it's awesome okay and, yeah and you two yeah. out there folks the altered states of drugs at you drug at um by uh bob and david and they're like no we had, that had nothing to do with drugs man and they've got like they're in um was the cannabis? <laughs> they're driving the cannabis. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, they're trying to um, they're trying to order a pizza. Oh my god! They're That's... all high, and they're like, "But he'll know, he'll know," and it's like, "Yeah, he'll know." We want a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of drug references back in our day. I mean, but they it... claim that there was none, and yeah, I mean, Scooby, holy crap, Scooby and Shaggy, complete. That was, if they weren't stoners, I don't know who was. I mean, they were always hungry. And, you know, you had a dog that talked. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> and they solved mysteries. And, you know, there were, there were no ghosts. It really wasn't go, 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 ghosts. It was just crap. Like, ah. You know, they, and 
you know, they're not even, uh, nobody's watching over these kids. They're just driving around. Yeah. Did Fred even have a license? Yeah. And where'd they get money from? Yeah. Yeah. I, there's, there's a fan theory out there that it's all, um, they're, they're driving through the wastelands after, you know, um, like an em economic downturn. They're just going to all these places that people are trying to run insurance scams. So, and that's, that's all it was, it was like insurance scams. Good, good, good ghosts. No, no I insurance scams. It, maybe that's what it is. They work for the insurance company. Uh, that would be cool. But what, I mean, mutual of Omaha is going to let them go out. <laughs> hey, 16 year olds. Sure. Go, go and do it. Why not? And how about Hercules? I know you got to remember that cartoon. Of course. Hercules, strong and long and story, <laughs> winner of ancient glory. Yes, that was that was weird. That was that was only on specialty uh, back in the day. I don't know how many channels you have, but up here in New Jersey, we had the big three. Then NBC, we had CBS, Philly, NBC. We had um, Channel Five, Channel Nine, and Channel Eleven. And if on a good day, you could get Channel Thirteen. So essentially we had seven channels to choose from, except if you had like WHT, which was one of the very first of the cable providers up here, beyond HBO, beyond like anything else. They, they had, um, and they would only do movies from on, Monday, on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from 7 p.m. to like 2 a.m. So we had, of course, the ABC, CBS, yeah. NBC, and then they had two channels that were on the, the uh, I guess it's UHF. I forgot yeah, how it goes. yeah. Yeah, they were local. You know, we had channel 39, channel 26. And uh, they didn't really show cartoons until later on when they had that kind of weird thing going on. You remember uh, where it wasn't quite, uh, I guess, they wasn't much of a money maker, so they experimented putting them on those channels, and then they just did away with cartoons. That's that's just short sightedness. You know, Cartoon Network smashing it. Yeah, I know, and that's that's part of the problem. That's uh, it, they don't make cartoons an event anymore. Like I said, Saturday mornings were a destination, and you got there the way you got there. So, Heck, man, this has been fun though. I've enjoyed this. Oh yeah. Well, let's do this again. You get in touch with me and then we can, we can uh, talk more about uh, the olden days. We, we have to do this again because there's so yeah. much more to talk about. Absolutely. And um, anyway, we'll just end the show right here. And uh, I would like to say thank you for taking the time to, uh, to spend with me today. And it's been a pleasure. Kyle, not pleasures all on this side of the, the, the camera. So thank you so much for having me. Wow. Another great episode. Thank you for joining us. And please leave a comment, like it, subscribe, let your friends know, and we will catch you on the next episode. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast. <laughs>